We're glad you're here tonight. <clears throat> We've been in Hebrews chapter 11 the last few weeks. It's never been my intent at all to study Hebrews chapter 11 under the idea of trying to better understand faith. We normally do it for that reason. But we've been trying to place it in the context of the fact that the book of Hebrews is written to people who want to give up. People who have grown tired. People who have grown maybe even just bored. Uh... Or maybe they've had a series of problems in their lives and they're just, it's just not worth it to them any longer. Uh, and we all understand what that's like. I mean, there's not a one of us that doesn't understand what it's like to grow tired and weary of something. Maybe not for us, it's church, but to grow tired and weary of something to the point you begin to question whether or not you want to continue it. Now, am, am I right about that? Anybody ever had anything like that? So I was talking to a fellow today who said, I got my run in before I came over to see you. And I said, well, how, what, what's it like? What do you, what do you, how do you, what's your running look like? He said, well, I did three, three miles today and I'll do one mile tomorrow. I said, well, I was training, I'd do more than that. But he said, I'm just getting tired of it and not sure I'm going to continue it any longer. And I said, well, I did it for 22 years or so, six miles a day, six days a week, until one cold January morning, I was literally running the streets of Lubbock, and I thought, I'm done with this. I don't like it anymore. I'm tired of it. And I went and bought a membership at a fitness center. Now, I, that was my last run. Now, I kind of wish I hadn't had not quit, except both feet are now messed up. I have to wear special insoles because I broke the front part of my feet down with this running. But I know what it's like to get tired and just want to quit. Uh, people do that at school. People do that at uh, jobs. People do that uh, in clubs. You know, you ever been a part of a club? A women's club, a men's club, a 4-H club, or something, and you just go, you, you, you just get tired of it and say, "I don't need to do this anymore. I've kind of graduated from this. I, I, I'm, I'm done." Well, the same thing happens with people in their, I hate to say their church life, but it, we understand that terminology. It's not really Bible, good Bible terminology, but in our church life, do we ever just grow tired and weary of it? Uh, I, I told you last week that I had <coughs> talked to a second preacher in, <coughs> excuse me, in two weeks <coughs> about about their jobs. Well, the, the one, the last preacher, and I did connect and talk. He wanted to fly to to Edmond and visit with me from uh, Texas, and he has two of his own homemade planes and. He said, the one homemade plane I can get up there in about an hour and a half, and that's a long, always way. And, uh, but we talked, and he said, things are just too hard these days. And he said that things are just not working well. <coughs> and he said, our, in our church, our elders are really, really concerned about why we have 100 people less after the pandemic than we had before the pandemic. And I said, well, that's really, really easy to understand because every church of any size is saying that same thing. They have less after than before, and that's because people have found that they can have worship in small groups or in their own families and do it over the Internet. And I said, that may be good, that may be bad. Bad in the sense your elders think it's bad, and so they've... they've rearrange the, a, a, a children's minister and they're hiring another children's minister. They're, they're saying there's, we, there's got to be something here we've done wrongly. It's not true. It's just that people are adjusting to how they do all this. Good or bad, I don't know. But a, but a man stopped me on the street last week, late in the week in my walk, and said, tell me about that finger of yours. Did you get that finger straightened out? And 
there was, there was only one way this man could have heard that I have a crooked finger, and that's by watching what we what we're doing. It's good or bad, I don't know. I just know people get tired. And I know preachers get tired of fighting this battle over and over again, week after week, of coming up with lessons and then having all these disputes that go on and, and, and so forth. And when you get really tired and weary, you want to give up. You want to quit. Uh, we just see it all the time. So the book of Hebrews had all these arguments. It's not, it's not finished. There'll be more arguments. But in chapter 11, the argument is, Faith is something that is so deeply entwined inside of you or something about which you have such deep conviction that it will hold you on course even when you want to quit. Everybody kind of find that? Faith is something so inside you, so much of a conviction that it will hold you on course even when you don't want to be on course. You kind of want to quit, but but this deep-seated belief and faith says, no, i got to keep going. I will keep going because the reward is too great. Everybody going to get that? So I want you to look at the end of chapter 12, chapter 11. We'll begin in verse 32. <clears throat> what more shall I say? I mean, I've talked about Jericho, and I've talked about Abraham, and I've talked about Moses, and I've talked about the Red Sea, and I've talked about Enoch, and I've talked about Abraham. What, what, more, what more can I say to you about this faith? I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, and that's a really beautiful story. Uh, in fact, I, 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 I worked this week my first lesson about Joshua, and I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to go from Joshua right into the book of Judges, uh, which is really interesting material too. Gideon was one of these judges. So I don't have time to tell you about Gideon or Barak or Samson or Jephthah. Uh, when you're studying the book of Judges, Judges, you have probably seven lessons or so on, on Samson. Those are really interesting lessons. Uh, and... You know, Samson, Samson had a lot of problems, uh, and he had a, pro a lot of problems with getting mixed up in this, these worldly things, but getting mixed up in those worldly things wasn't altogether what cost him his life in terms of his eyes, and then it, finally his death. It was the fact he broke his covenant with God. Now, there were reasons that, that pushed him into that, but he finally broke his covenant with God. Jephthah, David, Samuel, prophets... Who through faith, look, look at what they did by faith. They conquered kingdoms. They administered justice. And they gained what was promised. Who shut the mouths of lions. Who do you think that's talking about? Daniel. Quenched the fury of flames. Who do you think that's talking about? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength. Do you ever feel weak? And when you, get, when you want to give up, do you feel particularly weak, tired, weary? But their weakness was turned into strength because of their what? Because of their faith. Who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Uh, they became powerful in battle by what? Their faith. It wasn't their strength. Because our strength, our strength's not very, very strong. No matter who you are, your strength's not very strong. Uh, women receive back their dead, raised to life again. Others, now listen to this, others were tortured. They were tortured. Uh, what, what, do you, what do you think that means, to be tortured? What, what, what does that mean to be tortured? You put to the physical limits of pain. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's not. It's, I'm not being tortured when my dad of old would have me to lean over the bed and drop my pants and take the belt and, 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 and slap me several times with the belt. And he did. 
Never one time in all of his life that I remember did he ever do it in anger. He did Nick the same way. What's wrong with Steve today is that Steve never had that happen to him. Literally. He never had it happen to him one time. Steve, if you're listening, you never had it happen one time and you know it. You know? It's but that wasn't torture. You know, the, the tor torture is being chained up somewhere and they, they take little needles and they poke in you and then they take a little knife and they carve off some skin and, and, and they take a, 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 a lighter and they, they burn off the ends of your fingers and they, and they just keep doing a little more and a little more and a little more so you, can't think, you don't think you can take any more pain. Than, it's impossible. And they won't let it go. They just keep doing it more and more and more. And they were tortured. And guess what? They refused. They refused to be released. Oh, what, what, what do you mean they refused to be released? You see, when they're torturing you, they're usually torturing you not just for the fun of it. They're usually torturing you to get what? To renounce Christ. To renounce something or to get information or whatever. And if they would have renounced Christ or you would have given it over, then you get released. But they, they, they wouldn't do it. Now you're wanting to give up because you're just tired of how that preacher preaches all the time. Or you're, you're, you're just tired of whatever. Uh, and he says, they tortured and they still wouldn't give it up. Because they knew they would gain a better resurrection, the same resurrection we talked about Sunday. Remember that? Very same one we talked about Sunday. Some faced jeers and flogging. Others were chained, put in prison. Uh, jeers, that doesn't bother me so much anymore. Flogging probably would. And being chained would certainly bother me because I'm too claustrophobic and even being chained make me feel really, really badly and, and like I had to get loose. And they can lock me up in prison as long as the great big cell. I need the luxury one. I need the, I need the two bedroom cell, not, not one of those little bitty ones. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were put to death by sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. And they didn't give up. And they didn't give up. The world was not worthy of them. Isn't that an interesting statement? The world was not worthy of them. Because they, by faith, held on, stuck it out, as we would say, refused to give up. They wandered in deserts, and mountains, and in caves, and holes in the ground. And they would not give up. Now how does that make me feel? How does that make me feel when a bit of discouragement comes along, and at the same time I'm a bit tired, the two work hand in hand, and then someone kind of criticized me. You know, I didn't feel like it was a fair criticism, so my feelings are really hurt. And, 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 and now I just don't want to go back to that place anymore. I just let them have it. I don't need it. But what kind of toughness do we have? And these people have the toughness that comes through faith that is a deep, deep conviction that keeps them going on, keeps them moving forward. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that special? They were all commended for their faith. All of them. They were commended for their faith. And yet I want you to know something. All these I've been talking about, he said, not one of them received what is promised. What it says up earlier, Burke noted last week for us. They didn't receive what was promised. God had planned something better for us so, only, so that only together with us would they be made perfect? You see, all these stories are from what part of the Bible? All from the old. And they ended that old still wondering, what's this promise to Abraham 
that through his seed all the families of the earth be blessed. Still wondering. And now here it is, and they stuck with it. They stuck with it. Beginning Joshua Sunday morning, <clears throat> I, I mean, I, I, really, I really paused and thought about what these people went through for 400 plus years in Egyptian bondage. And Joshua is going to be born at the end of that time. Uh, and yet they stuck with it. At least some of them did. And so they didn't receive what was promised, but they knew somehow without being able to see clearly, they couldn't see clearly how it was going to work. Like Noah couldn't see clearly how a flood was going to come and his boat was going to float. They couldn't see that clearly. These people couldn't see clearly what God had promised. They just knew God had promised something. And now for us, together with them, the promise is now realized. And they get to share with us in the great reward that we have in heaven because they lived by faith. Now, if you'll live by faith, he says, if you'll do your job of living by faith. They did their job. We all together now get to, to share in this great reward. Isn't that something? Isn't that, isn't that special? That we just don't quit so easily? And yet we live in a world where people quit really easily. They, they just want to drop out really, really easily. And people want to drop out of a relationship with God. And I'm not, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I will never, ever, ever beat up these people who choose to watch church online because I don't know how to judge that. And I kind of this feeling is, if, if God didn't want that to happen, he wouldn't have brought this pandemic, wouldn't have brought someone like Burke here. So I'm not going to judge that harshly. Okay. The one I would judge harshly, maybe not just harshly, is the one that won't do anything. Won't do anything. Forget all about God. Brought up knowing God, walk all the way from God. That's, that's the one he's begging to come back. And yet while I say that, I know there are things that we've sometimes done ourselves to make people want to walk away. There's some things we've done ourselves to make them want to walk away. And I, I don't like that. <clears throat> 